I'm Karen Sperling. This is a photo by Dog Patch Pet Portraits and a painting I did based on it with my new Artistry Corel Painter Brushes Volume 9. In this video, I'll show you the new brushes in the Volume 9 collection. Starting out with number one, this brush is useful for painting in the background. On the default settings, it paints this sort of oil painty brush stroke. So you can see it's in here. That's how I created these brush strokes. This brush is also useful as a more general background brush. I'm going to raise the size slider. And if you paint with it, you see that it adds broad areas of subtle color. So it's a nice way to fill in backgrounds. Number two, Blender Streaky. is a way to blend existing brush strokes in the nature of the streaky brush. So I'm not putting down color, I'm blending what's already there. And also, if I raise the size slider, I get nice soft blendy strokes. The blender setting pushes around pixels that are already in the image without adding any color. Color Furry is a way to paint dog fur and it's how I painted all of the fur that you see. I'm going to press Option on Mac, Alt on Windows and click to pick up a color and then I paint. If you are painting in a clone, if you turn on tracing paper with Command T on Mac, Control T on Windows, you can see where areas of light and dark are in the photograph and then paint them into the painting. So I'm looking to see where the light and dark areas are, and then I paint in the painting. All of my books and my video classes all have information for how to work with tracing paper and how to clone and all of the other painter steps for turning photos into paintings. For now, I'm just showing you what the brush strokes look like. Clone or Furry picks up information from the photograph and paints in the nature of the brush. So if you wanted to use the exact colors from the photograph, you can paint with the clone or furry brush. You can also switch back and forth. For instance, this area isn't coming in very dark, so I'm going to go into the color furry brush and choose a darker color so that I can bring in a darker tone in this area. Next is the Blender Furry brush. And there are some harsh edges here. So if I paint with the Blender Furry brush, it blends out those harsh edges without adding color. Again, the blenders just push around 
pixels that are already in the image. The next brush, number six, color bold texture, does exactly that. It's how I got these strokes down here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see them better. So if you choose a color, this brush will bring these colors in in a bold way. And it's a great way to get like an acrylic paint look. Also, this brush is paper sensitive. So if you click in the toolbox at the bottom over here, you reveal the paper panel so you can choose a texture and you'll get some interesting looks depending on the texture that you choose. Then you can go back to the brushes that we already talked about or use the brushes I'm going to show you to blend what you just did. So I'm going to go into Blender Streaky and blend this a little bit. You don't have to blend it too much. Just soften the effect a little bit. And then you can go back into the Bold Texture Brush and add some more texture and keep going back and forth that way to get a really nice painterly effect. Number seven, Color Streaky Solid gives you a more solid result when you paint with it. Let's see if I can show you the difference. Here's Color Streaky. And it's a more subtle result. And here's Color Streaky Solid and it's a little bit more intense. That may seem like a very subtle difference, but that's how you get interesting variations like down here by having both of those brushes to paint with. Number eight, Color Bristly, creates another kind of a bristle brush stroke. And it's also how I got all of these variations down here. So mixing these various brush strokes gives you a very painterly result. Then if you use the next brush, number nine, the Blender Bristly, it blends in the nature of the bristly brush that you just used. So it's pushing around pixels. Number 10, is another blender brush. This one is a smooth blender with some textury edges. This brush is useful for blending the furry strokes 
if you'd like to get them a little bit more solid. So you can go into the color furry brush and add brush strokes. And then if you'd like less of a furry look, go into the Blender Smooth brush number 10 and smooth them out a little bit. Textury Color paints a textured stroke good for painting in the background. And when you tap on your stylus, you get more color. And if you click and drag with the stylus, you get less color and more blending. So you see after a while, you start to get a nice painterly look. The next brush, the Textury Blender, blends in the nature of that brush. So you can get very smooth textury strokes. The Cloner Streaky picks up color from the source image and paints in a kind of a textury, bristly way. Good for faces on dogs. I'm turning on tracing paper to see where my areas of light and dark are, and then I paint. So it's painting in this kind of textured brush stroke bringing in information from the source in a very painterly way. More textury color paints just like it says. It paints more textury color in the background. So if you sort of scribble with it, you get a nice textured result. The Textury Cloner paints with the colors in the source photo when you paint in the clone. And it's good for painting details. The highlight brush is good for painting areas of light. So if I look in the photograph, I see, for instance, there are some highlights here on the ear. So I can use it, use this brush to paint them in. So if you tap the stylus, you add color, and if you paint, it blends the color. Turpentine is a way to paint brush strokes in the background. If you've ever seen an oil painting, 
if you blend paint with turpentine, you get these kinds of streaky strokes. So it gives it a very painted look. The turpentine blender will smooth out what you just did, but don't smooth too much because it's nice when you see the strokes. It makes it look more painterly. And the turpentine cloner paints with colors from the source image in this sort of turpentine fashion. Last but not least is number 20, the touch-up details brush. I'm going to use the tracing paper to guide me. And if I paint, brush will bring in details from the source photo. The more you use this brush, the more photorealistic your painting will look. So if you want a very painterly result, use less of this detail brush. And if you'd like a more photorealistic result, use more of it. I hope you enjoyed this look at the Volume 9 Artistry Corel Painter Brushes, available at my website, artistrymag.com. For information about how to paint portraits, landscapes, and composites in Corel Painter, get Painting for Photographers Volume 3, available in print at Amazon and at my website, and in ebook format at my website. Thanks for watching.